If there's one way to make your mix sound better, it's through a mix bus. With big picture adjustments, you can create a vibe and add glue to your track to make it feel like a finished product. I'm gonna take you through a song I'm working on to show you step-by-step -step on how to set up a great mix bus. Keep in mind, I'm using Pro Tools, but all these concepts apply to any DAW and any plugins that you use. So to start off, I'd like to show you the difference between a track with the mix bus on and with the mix bus off, so you can hear what you're getting. This is with the mix bus off. Mix bus on. Mix bus off. Mix bus on. And as you can hear, you get a lot more width, dimension, space, and excitement out of the mix bus. Before I turn on my mix bus, I'll group all my tracks according to each instrument. I'll take all the drums and I'll group them into my own drum aux. I'll take all the effects and I'll group them into the effects aux. I'll do the same thing with the bass, the synths, and the vocals. Now all those groups will then be sent together into the mix bus. So let's dig into the mix bus. Normally I like to start off with any sort of trim. This is just one that I choose that I like the sound of. The trim is basically giving me more or less headroom, depending on how loud the track is, how loud the groups are. After my trim plugin, I like to use an intelligent equalizer. Here I'm using Goldfoss. I'm basically just trying to clean up my mid-range, so I'm bypassing all the highs up to about 4,000 kilohertz and all the lows to about 200 hertz. This way, the Intelligent Equalizer is not affecting my entire mix. It's only affecting my mid-range. So let's hear this um, bypassed and on. Now you can hear it's pretty subtle, but it's cleaning up some of the mid-range, allowing for a little more clarity in that area. So after the Intelligent Equalizer, I'm using analog gear. I'll bring in a hardware insert and I'm sending it to the SSL Fusion. This is where I'm adding a lot of my color. To start off, we got the vintage drive where I'm bringing in a lot more harmonic energy and a little bit of soft compression, which is through the density knob. Then there's a slight EQ, shelving EQ that happens where I'm only adding a little bit of low end to give me some low end boost on the whole mix. And then my favorite part is the stereo imaging. This gives me some more width throughout the speakers. And also what's great about this is the space function. And the space is actually bringing in some slight low end information only on the sides of the speakers. So only left and right, nothing throughout the center. You can hear all that harmonic information almost starting to distort there. This is with it out. If you wanted to recreate this with plugins, you can easily pull up any sort of saturator. There could be tape machines, soft clipping, anything around that area you can bring in that would emulate the vintage drive. And if you're looking for something else for the width, there's a very common one, the S1 Imager. If you're just finding anything that's giving you some sort of sound field dimension. So after my hardware, I wanna bring in something that will glue the track together. Here I'll pull up a compressor. This is a Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor. One thing that's important here is the sidechain feature. With this plugin, what the sidechain feature does is it gets rid of anything below 95 hertz being sent to the compressor. This way we're not ducking any vocals because of a loud kick drum or bass or anything along those lines. So you could hear this example here. And again, we're just touching the compressor, a half dB, one dB max. This is with the side chain in. Now if we take the side chain out, up a little bit. 
hear how that synth and that low end of the synth is really affecting the compressor, allowing it to compress a lot more. We don't want that. Especially once we bring in the vocals. Side chain back in. So after the compressor, I want to actually add a little bit more glue. So I'll bring up a tape machine. As we know, tape machine is going to give us a lot more warmth too. There will be some more harmonic content added here. See, we're getting a lot more crunch here. Which sometimes could be nice, but this track, it seems like it may be too much. Let's take it back. Take down a little bit of the high end here, add a little more saturation. So you can immediately hear as soon as it's turned on, again, we're getting a lot more glue and a lot more harmonic information to really bring the track together and feel like one. So next, after all of that, I want to get some broad stroke EQ in, something that's a lot more shelf oriented. So let's start with this one. With this plugin, what I really like about the API is the punch to the low end. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the high end, but the low end is really tight and has a really nice punch. I'm actually going to not use a shelf here. I want to get that kick drum to come out a little bit more. So we'll go at about 50 hertz here. Let's, let's see what it about 4 dB. Let's see what that sounds like. Now you can hear we're getting a lot more punch out of the low end. The kick drum, the bass even. Let's bypass most of these things except for the high end here. What's nice about this one is this has a very silky smooth high end. It's not very brittle and we can go up to 26 kilohertz, which is extremely high. It's something our ears can't technically hear that, but the slope comes down to a lot lower, more probably around five or six at a very, very small degree. Again, we'll move it to a shelf here. And let's boost this pretty heavily and see what this sounds like on the whole track. Now you can hear when I'm boosting that even 9 dB, it's not getting brittle. It doesn't even hurt your ears yet. That's what's so nice about this. It's very smooth. So let's take it back. Obviously that was way too much here. Here, we're just bringing the track, the high end of life here, add a little bit of excitement to the high end without getting too annoying. One of my last EQ steps is this dangerous Bax EQ. I don't do any super broad strokes here. I'll leave the two shelves alone, but what I really love is the cuts on the top and the high and the low end. So here I like to take, try about 24 Hertz, maybe 30, and just get all that rumble, the super low end bass that's in the song that we don't hear and don't need. You really only maybe get it in the car speaker and it's muffling everything. We want to just completely get rid of that. So we'll cut that here. And again, you could do the same thing. All three of these EQs you could do with one plugin. Same thing here with the Fab Filter, a nice EQ. We can cut some of the super lows. Right, this goes down to 10. You can do the same thing on the high end here. This is only goes to 30. And again, we can add these shelves back in. And we could do the same frequencies here. I think we're about 27. And see, you can you can see it's very, very little. Same thing with the low end. 
So I think we were about 50. And that's basically what it would look like on a spectral EQ. And then last on my mix bus, I like to add a little bit of soft clipping. So we'll bypass this compressor here. We don't need, again, there's various plugins that do the same thing. I want to make sure no, none of the compressor settings are in. Got the threshold all the way up and we'll use some of the soft clipping here. Let's, let's check that out. Go a little heavy on it for a second. So here we're crushing it now. Just want to get a couple of those peaks, a couple of louder snares maybe. And again, this is just saving us, saving a little bit of headroom for our speakers, our converters, our next plug-in, our limiter, and we're basically stopping those harsh transients at the top and allowing them to not come through as much. Throughout this video, I'm not trying to necessarily tell you how to mix or exactly what your mix bus should be. I'm basically trying to get you to find a way to add some vibe, depth, clarity, enhancement to your overall mix. And that's what's important here. It's not exactly which plugin, or which EQ or exactly what I'm doing. It's about how can we glue this track and get this track to feel as one final nice piece that you could hear on the radio.